Hi everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about all of this week's Disney Plus news, including the brand new Falcon and the Winter Soldier trailer from the Super Bowl, Blue Sky Studio shutting down, all the things from the Investors Call, including Black Widow's release, some loads of National Geographic content, a Star Originals update, plus we'll be giving all of our thoughts on this week's Disney Plus Originals, including WandaVision. So before we jump into any of that, make sure you do go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. You can like, follow, and subscribe on all the different audio and visual platforms, such as YouTube, iTunes, etc. And you can find us on Twitter and Facebook, and even join our Facebook group, where we just hit over 160,000 members. So a big hello to everybody over there. So uh, let's jump into the news, because there's been so much of it. So let's kick off with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier trailer, which dropped during the Super Bowl, where two teams did something or other and then they went to disney world um so <laughs> okay. really? i'm a, yeah you know whatever <laughs> and so and that was the main thing was the trailers we also got a raya and the last dragon trailer and there was a disney streaming bundle for the u.s as well but generally as far as i can tell there wasn't a lot of buzz coming out of this year super bowl trailers um normally it's all over the place but didn't really hear very much this year uh, not just the trailers, uh, the Super Bowl as well. I think a lot of that is, um, you know, the office tends to drive a lot of that conversation. We're not really in the office as much. I didn't actually know there was a Super Bowl until the trailers started getting posted. I was like, oh, oh, was, that's why so many trailers are posting right now. It was an, it was slightly annoying because the trailer broke like half an hour after I went to bed at like 11 o'clock. So like, uh, and I was expecting it like three o'clock in the morning, you know, like in the middle of the Super Bowl, but no, they, they started dropping early. Oh no, you you've, got to, you've got to do it towards the end. Um, first to point out, um, I don't think we're going to talk about the Raya trailer at all. No. Cause I don't think either of us really watched it. Um, the movie's so close to being out. I don't want to get any inadvertent spoilers or anything. No. Uh, so Falcon and the Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. uh, great trailer. Uh, it really sets the tone. It shows you this is a Marvel movie just in, television yeah. form or disney plus form it's got all of what you would expect from this if it were a movie or if this was black widow and the sequel uh it told it told us what to expect without giving away the key details it gave us little teasers like baron zemo's mask that he's holding on to and and you get to see sharon carter and things like that so yeah i i'm really excited i mean i was already excited but this yeah, just kind of, reinforced it. it it's got like more of that kind of the humor between the two characters and not really liking each other um i love you know the whole thing like falcon just jumping out and flying and falcon flying around because that's what we want more of um i'm really looking forward to the series apparently the anticipation for this is much higher than one division which i'm not entirely surprised at because i kind of had this weird vibe that maybe um like your average joe maybe wouldn't have kind of picked up on what that was about whereas falcon is very much straight up this is mcu stuff Plus, it should have arrived last year, so it is about six months later than we were anticipating it. But yeah, can't wait for it. It's hard to believe that we are literally, what, five, four, five weeks away? And we've still got three more episodes of WandaVision. It's like, you know, we're, we're being treated this year. So I'm really looking forward. I'm going to be honest, I won't watch any more trailers now. That'll be it. I won't watch any of the clips or anything like that. I will be trying to stay away from clips and videos and... I like, I like that I like that I like that eight o'clock morning feeling when you don't know what's going on absolutely agree that's why we're not talking about the the Raya trailer and I we will not be talking about any uh future Falcon and the Winter Soldier trailers yeah it's kind of one of the, I find that with just trailers it's just like I like to watch the first one that's it me I I will tap out because I mean with Disney I feel like WandaVision they are constantly releasing trailers to kind of grab people's attentions and stuff and it's I mean the Falcon and the Winter Soldier trailer was breaking all kinds of records for the amount of people watching it this is going to be a really big show I think they've had to for WandaVision because the series has taken so many weird course corrections not corrections mm. course changes even in the five mm. or six episodes that we've got that um if you watched the first episode and you're like, yeah, this isn't for me, which actually would have been my reaction if the second episode hadn't immediately dropped yeah. with it. Um, you, you go in and they're like, oh, here's the trailer for episode three. Whoa, this looks nothing like what I was yeah. watching before. And then four changes and five. And obviously we'll talk about that later, yeah. uh, the most recent episode. But I can see why they have to keep updating WandaVision and being like, this yeah. is what WandaVision is. Yeah. Honestly, um, it is MCU. <laughs> it, it's MCU. Uh, well, this, this week yeah. was very obviously MCU. Yeah. Um, well, again, we'll, yeah. we'll get back to that, but 
Yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. There's no question. This is mm-hmm. like, this is Captain America 4 or 3.5. Um, and it's exactly what we would expect mm. from that. Yeah, so that one's that one was pretty cool. So let's move on to the next topic. So there was the quarterly financial results this week. Um, to be honest, they well, they do this every every quarter. It's just standard stuff. Usually for a press release, they kind of come out with a big press release and kind of pump up something or have some big news to kind of try and drive up stocks. Very much a muted one this year. They kind of say, well, we got some stuff opening in Disney World, but you know, you can't go to Disney World. And, you know, our numbers are really bad because our parks are closed and, you know, the movies aren't being released. But Disney Plus is doing amazing because Disney Plus hit 94.9 million subscribers as of the 2nd of January. So, you know, this is at least five weeks ago. Um, so they are now no longer going to be, because what they were doing was to release it in part of the press release and then in the quarterly results call they would give like an update of where it was maybe like a few days ago well they're not doing that anymore you're getting what you're getting in the in the press release because it'll be every three months we will get an update unless it's a major milestone now that kind of caught my attention of going well it's a major milestone 100 million kind of sounds like a milestone and they haven't made any noise about it so maybe they've not quite hit 100 million just yet they did manage to add over 8 million subscribers between December the 2nd and January the 2nd. But obviously, we had the one, we had the um, Mandalorian tra- uh, f- final, I'll get my teeth in this morning. Yeah, yeah. Mandalorian, Mandalorian finale. <laughs> Mandalorian <laughs> um, uh, finale in there. You also had Soul Hating on Christmas. And I'm wondering if maybe a lot of people didn't unsubscribe because of WandaVision. And I think, because they did even say during the event that they've got quite a low churn rate where people aren't unsubscribing which i think we're right on that point now because had the mandalorian finished and then we weren't getting one division until like april i think we would have seen it that kind of drop off with well, this year they don't necessarily would have done that yeah i am curious though um given that we do have like just a wall of marvel from now till the end of the year if people might not be doing kind of like a I don't know, like a lily pad style where, all right, we'll skip WandaVision. We'll resubscribe for Falcon and the Winter Soldier and we'll binge WandaVision because it'll be done by that point. Yeah. After Falcon and the Winter Soldier's done, we'll wait until the next one that we care about, watch that, and then binge all the stuff that we missed in the, yeah. in the middle. Uh, but it doesn't seem like the numbers bear out that all that many people are doing that. No, I think, I think the weekly drop, as much as people complain about it, there is a reason they do it. And it's a reason it works. And this, you know, that first year of Disney Plus where we were, had the drought of, you know, this, well, pretty much from last January right through till sort of October was quite barren in terms of stuff for mainstream audiences. And now that's gone. You know, we, we're, long, we're long past that. They have got show after show after show lined up to keep us entertained. And yeah, so this is a big kind of big thing for them. You know, they hit their four year target within a year they did amazingly well they've set new targets of like 230 odd million to hit by the time they get to 2024 they're pushing forward about a third of those are actually disney plus hot star subscribers in india so that's about 60 million obviously for every uh, everybody else they've got the singapore launch coming up um, in two, like two weeks time they also then got other plans for nor'eastern european countries japan south korea and then they still got like the middle east and africa and um, other places to go yet so i suspect you know they are going to be hitting um a pretty high number by the end of the year they said that all their plans are still rolling out as um anticipated and they plan to get into most of the markets by the time the end of the year rolls around um which kind of makes sense i mean i suspect um kobe did have some impact on what they could do in terms of where they could go and what they can do but yeah the numbers are just going to continue to grow i mean they are now well if you include Amazon video, they are the third biggest. If you don't include Amazon Prime because people are just getting their free deliveries, they are the second biggest in the world now. So that's kind of, um, it's always, Amazon's always that hard one because there's, a, there's like always that kind of little note of going, there's people subscribe that aren't watching. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a tricky one. Well, uh, digital numbers are always tricky no matter how you spin it. Because uh, mm-hmm. we, we know that, that Netflix and Disney and CBS and all of them, uh, you know, they'll, they'll give you the viewership numbers, uh, but 
they won't tell you how much of the episode people watch. Yeah. Does it count as a watch if you accidentally turn it on for three seconds and like, oh, I didn't want to watch this and back out? That yeah. normally counts as a watch. And just kind of like, so it's tricky it, I know it, the whole thing is skewy. <laughs> yeah, because that was the thing. I know Facebook got into some real issues with with that, but that was a, like the auto roll feed. But yeah, so that was so that was that. They also kind of skirted around the fact that Black Widow's release in May is still still scheduled for cinemas, and they were still very much like we're still kind of you know still planning for that. We're optimistic, but we're being flexible, and we're going to watch how it goes. AKA, we're going to see what Raya does, and we're going to see where everything is in probably about three or four weeks, and then we're going to make a decision because they're going to have, unlike every other movie, they can just keep, they could shift it back to July and take Shang Chi's and just do the, the, sh the Marvel shuffle and just jump them all around a bit. But we're getting to a point now where they're intersecting with the TV series. So it's not like Jungle Cruise could be pushed back another year. It doesn't matter. There's no interconnection with that. It doesn't make any difference. But Black Widow has a big impact on everything else. So they're in a bit of a tricky situation. Apparently, Mulan did meet their expectations. I think they were aware that there were some issues with Mulan, and therefore that was going to be the case of but that's how it, you know, what. But I think Raya is very much a test. So as the other, there's a thing going around now going, if you want Black Widow on Premier Access, you need to buy Raya the Last Dragon. <laughs> I mean, yes and no. Uh, you... <laughs> Black Widow is always going to be a special case and, and the decision will ultimately uh, come from the bean counters, but they're also going to know that Raya and Black Widow don't necessarily have overlap in market. Uh, so I'm sure that they will look at those numbers, but I don't think that they'll have the same kind of impact that we were talking about. Like we were talking about when Mulan was still a yeah. future release and we're like, they're going to be looking at this uh, if you want premiere access to be a thing, then let that factor into your judgment. And if, and if you are just like morally opposed to this completely, um, then, then don't, I think that's less of an issue now. Uh, they've kind of decided that they're going forward with it. Mulan was successful enough. Um, but Black Widow, no matter what, it's going to be its own special case. I would not be surprised if, if the vaccinations don't factor into this. Um, cause we're, there's yeah. a lot of positive news, even if if the percentage rate isn't that high, uh, or as high as we would like it to be. Um, there's a lot of you know medical talk coming out where, yeah, uh, even if you're one of those people who you know the vaccine you get it, but it doesn't. You're like the five percent or the ten percent that that the coverage doesn't quite work. The chances of it being a bad reaction of yeah. you know you dying from it is almost nil. So. If the yeah. vaccination rate gets up and the confidence in our ability to go out and have a somewhat normal life yeah. as we used to define it, people might, uh, or Disney might be more willing to say, all right, yeah, we're going to push one more delay, but you'll get to see it in the theaters. Yeah. Right. So I, I think that's a very tricky one because ultimately they are going to have to, it depends on when the, when the numbers come back in. Um, I still, I still think Free Guy is going to be the kind of the canary in the coal mine to kind of see how it goes um, in May. I think that will be it. I still think Cruella is going to shift. I think that will still happen, or they might go right. We're going to do because I don't see that working as a premier access. I don't think the the interest will be higher. I don't think Disney are fully committed to the idea of they they still want to go back to the events. I still think they're being very optimistic. And I think the concept of flexible gives them a way out if they choose to. I still think we're going to end up seeing all the summer movies, things like Jungle Cruise, all the rest of it. They're all going to be on Premier Access. That's my personal opinion, but they're not going to announce it until about a month beforehand because I think they're going to see the numbers in June and July and go, yeah, they're not quite where we want them. Because um, the thing is, how many people are going to want to go back? Um, how many people are going to want to sit in an air-conditioned building? Because it, it's... The f I mean, for us over here in the UK, we're still in the national lockdown. You know, cinemas are officially, they are closed. There is no, you know, they can open if they want. No, they're, they are official. They're all shut down. We will be finding out in about two weeks time what our roadmap is out of all of this. The expectation is spring being could be still May. And so therefore, and then it's going to be slowly released out. 
and they're talking, you know, until a big enough number. So it could be May, June before we're all vaccinated. I've got our first dogs, maybe even a little bit later. So therefore, and we're in a small country and we've got one of the fastest rollouts of uh, vaccinations in the world. You know, that's the thing of how it's working. So I know, for example, here in the UK, I'm there going, there is no chance that it's going to make it because they're not even going to be vaccinating your average person in the street by April or by May. So, and then it takes three weeks for it to kick in. So it, it, in my eyes, for us in the UK, it doesn't work. But they're not looking at us. They're going to look at the whole of Europe. They're going to look at Asia and all the rest of it. And that's why I think Premier Access will happen because all the markets aren't ready yet. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a conflict between individual desire, that being us, the consumers, uh, government mandate, which obviously is much stricter in the UK than it is uh, stateside. Uh, but I th- I think a large part of it's going to be that psychological factor of people just want normal. Mm. Or, or what we perceive as normal and going to the theater with your kids to see the Disney movie or going to the, the Marvel movie is such a part of normal mm. that I, right when things start to open again, I suspect we might actually see a little bit of a rebound of people just being like, I want to do anything that is outside of my house. You know, I, I, I completely agree with that. And I, but I think that's going to be more September, October. It's, and I think I it's think also it, going to be more of like a spike too. Because I mean, when we start getting the boosters as well in the autumn, but a bigger thing issue is going to be is if, for example, over here, if we still have them, we're still going to have a mask mandate. So therefore you, that will have an impact on people going to the cinema as well. You know, if you've got to, you know, if you've got to wear masks for, you know, right through the summer, I think that's, that's going to be an issue, but I still think Black Widow is going to shift to Disney. I'd be honest. I would. I would. For twenty pound, it's like it's. I'm gonna. It's gonna cost me ten quid to get cinema to see it, um, and I'm gonna watch it twice. So therefore, I'll get my my, my value out of it. Um, and that's, that's that's definitely yeah. the same for me. Like even with Raya, I'm like, am I gonna watch this twice before it get, goes on to regular yeah. Disney Plus access? I don't. I and I can't judge because I haven't yeah. seen it. I, I won't know if I'm gonna watch it twice yeah. until I've seen it. Black Widow, though, I am fairly confident. I'll be like, I'm going to watch this, and then I will probably watch this a week later or, or two weeks later, and I'll get my money's worth. It's, I mean, it's like for me, it's like I say everything is open by May for us. If I've had the vaccine, I might be more inclined to go. But if I haven't had the vaccine, it would just be a straight up no. no. And I, I mean, it's bad enough going cinema with your mask, also going to the sh- supermarket with your mask, and I don't want to sit in the cinema with, for, for three hours, two and a half hours with a mask on. Um, and that's just that's just me but I, you know, i'm quite happy you know when you go to the shops you have to do it, it's fine i know people have to work in it but i've been used to you know being at home so i don't have to do that but my wife has to wear it all day long so there is that trade-off so yeah we're gonna have to wait and see but other than that that was about it there was really very little um discussion really um they very much were quite muted so let's move on to some other bad news disney has confirmed that they're going to be shutting down the blue sky studios um from april that will be shutting down they have cancelled the nimona animated movie that they're working on. apparently they still had about 10 months left to do on it which is kind of weird because you think about like these movies and you think 10 months you know there's but then when you watch things like the the pixar inside pixars and the the froze you actually realize there's actually they still got a lot of work to do in those last 10 months of you know you tend i always you know like you say you assumed a lot more more of it was done, but yeah, they, they've cancelled it. We don't know what the fate of the Ice Age uh, movie that they were working on for Disney Plus, and apparently there was also maybe an Ice Age series. They all might just get moved over to other... The fact they're still working there till April says to me that they're wrapping up um, a project, and that's the only one really that we know about, so that would make sense if they've been working on that one for a while. And they wouldn't have announced it in December had they because they would have had plans in place, you know, I'm, I'm going to be, but it, it's definitely sad news, but I wasn't surprised by this. Yeah. Uh, not, not surprised, a little disappointed. It would have been nice for, for blue skies to be like the training ground mm. for, for Disney animation. Um, I would also say, I'm not sure if they'll wrap up a project, like, you know, they'll, they'll finish up yeah. and we'll get the ice age movie you yeah. know, in, in June or July. It might just be an asset transfer where yeah. uh where it's like um you know transfer all this stuff to to a cloud server or yeah. or to a hard disk and and physically bring it over to the guys in burbank or wherever 
um, and and they will pick up whatever they can of Ice Age and keep mm. working on it, or you know, whatever project they're working on. And so we don't know. Uh, I mean, I mean, also they could move a few of the people over to that division to do. I it. I would not be surprised if at least a, a handful of these guys got picked up and moved on to like the main Disney crew. Well, apparently they are trying to move as many of them over as they can. But, I mean, it might affect about four hundred and fifty people. I think this is just, you know, and like people came, well, why did Disney buy them all just to shut everything down? It's like, the thing is, is Blue Sky Studios is, is, it's not their creation. It's a, it doesn't have the brand recognition. And I'll be honest, it doesn't have that black brand recognition. You know, Ice Age and that they do. And I think it would have been, they would have been great to Disney Plus, you know, for doing animation for it. But do they need free animation, you know, animation studios when Pixar can churn out three or four movies a year and they don't need, you know, they, you know, it's not like they're only making one thing at a time. They are working on multiple projects, but, you know, I do think it's a little bit like, did they really, they got the, they got the assets, they, they still own the characters, they still own the movies, but it does feel like, I kind of assumed this was going to happen at some point anyway. It just kind of made sense. I was thinking it, it would probably be more of a merger than an outright cancellation, which it might turn into be. It it, yeah. it might end up that out of those all those animators and producers mm. and such, a lot of them end up in smaller Disney yeah. studios or, or something along those lines. Because we think of Disney as like one giant studio, but in fact, it's many, many very small teams working on independent projects. And they then there's probably more than we even realize. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of kind of happened, and especially like what I said, I was hoping for it would turn into a training ground or, or a, mm-hmm. a testing ground. Disney and Pixar are already doing that on their own. Like we got the the Pixar popcorn a couple of uh, mm-hmm. weeks ago, and we've had the Spark shorts, and Disney's doing plenty of shorts as well. So they've already got their training facilities. I also think it's. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't know whether or not Disney like want to put their name you know if they're going to release an animated movie they'd much rather release it under the disney brand because it's worth more and oh, then yeah, a, absolutely and, that's, and, and then maybe we want to go blue disney blue sky studios because it's like they don't need to do that they can just release it you know as a disney thing i it, it's a shame but we don't know really of like how much of this is just a reshuffling there might be there no technical issues as well maybe they've got a, a building and stuff that they're releasing and it's just costing it and they're like well we don't want them there and you know a bit more like that and i think that's the big key thing really. and similarly from a technical point of view blue skies might be using um software that is not compatible with the the software that disney teams use or the pixar teams use and that's just one more set of service contracts that you need to pay for uh and if they can roll them into to whatever they're using in their in-house studios that saves them a, a significant amount of money i don't think I don't think people realize how much professional licensed software costs. It's astronomical. Yeah. And let's be honest, they're, they're going to be grabbing all the best talent. They'll be grabbing all the ideas. And they might have as well have been like working out on what, what movies are you working on? Right, this whole project is now moving over to this division because they put in the guy from Pixar at the top of, I think from Walt, Walt Disney Animation, they put him in the charge of the top of it to kind of deal with it. But it just, it, it, it just makes like it's 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 sad, and I know there's a lot of people like that, like, you know, that were upset about it. It's like I think most people saw this coming. Um, I think you know, and they're like, you know, well, why do they buy a ring if they're just going to shut it down? It's like they're shutting things down, but they're like a lot of it is rebranding. A lot of it is just, and you know, I think that's the other key thing as well of of how that all works out. But yeah, so it's it's certainly a, a sad, um, but hopefully all the people that were at Blue Sky Studios, we'll get um, jobs with Disney and stuff and so on. So let's now move on to um, another quick topic. Um, Star is coming to Disney Plus internationally uh, in like Australia, New Zealand, Canada, UK, Singapore, and across Europe from February the 23rd. Um, with that, we're going to be getting four new original series dropping on the day. They include Soul Opposites, Hellstrom, Love Victor, and Big Sky. We're going to be getting two episodes on the first day when it launches on the Tuesday. And now they have confirmed that every Friday there will be new episodes dropping um, for those series. So every Friday we're going to be getting lots of Disney book or new star originals. There's actually going to be about 35 of them in the first year. These are basically everything from like Hulu and ABC and FX that they've got licenses to use for because they haven't basically signed them away. 
don't automatically assume just because it's a Hulu original we'll be getting it because if this, if they brought the rights rights to it for US they wouldn't be coming um but this is kind of interesting that they're doing it It makes sense with big sky i think everybody is kind of questioning why they're doing it with the free hulu shows that all got dropped at once in the u.s last year but yet yeah, we're on the we're going to be on the weekly drop for so for me in like two weeks we're going to have like four new originals every week and i'll just be sitting here twiddling my thumbs going uh either alternating we've already had that for a year or um Maybe yeah, it'll drop on Hulu. I don't know. Yeah, I, um, it, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, next week I will be talking about those shows, um, and that'll be a kind of interesting to get into. But it's definitely it was a kind of I think it makes a lot of sense what they're doing. They're kind of continuing on with that Disney Plus tradition of Friday releases. I think it really bulks up our. Um, Light in the chair, get off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Leia's very active this morning. Huh? Yes, I know she's very active. She's, she's moving around all over the place. Um, but yes, um, I do think it's a good. I think it's a good idea. I think it's the idea of getting us used to dropping them all. The drop it all at once doesn't work for streaming. I, I know everyone loves it, but Disney are looking at this going. They don't want it. They they want you locked in. They want you to keep coming back. Um, it does mean that we have got all those shows running right through March and right through um, April. That's if more stuff doesn't start dropping as well. But yes, yeah, so it's going to be um, fun to see how all this works out. So yeah, so star originals are going to be definitely a thing. And yeah, it's, it's going to be fun every week with them. Yeah. And, and even factoring in that they're not dropping in the U S or they already have dropped in the U S uh, you guys shouldn't expect the, the full on reviews for these, the, they'll get, they will get much smaller mentions, even if it's something that, that I can talk about, you know, a show yeah. that I've seen, you know, we, we will be sticking largely with the big releases and, and kind of go like, Oh yeah, that show. I really enjoyed that episode. This is what yeah. I liked about it. Um, all right. WandaVision, you know? Yeah. Cause I mean, the thing is, is what it's like for me. I mean, I've, you know, really took like, yeah. Okay. So like episode four of love Victor, well, you guys in America have had access to it for a year. So that the matter, so there is a kind of weird thing of it's, but yeah, I will be I will be discussing them. Um, so then moving on from there, National Geographic, they were a very busy week. They had the the there was a basically like a critics tour. So with that, they announced like loads of shows, loads of shows. I mean, there must have been about twenty announcements, loads of documentaries, loads of series, loads of things returning. There was a couple of ones specifically Disney Plus related I want to get into. Secrets of the Whales, which they actually announced well over a year ago, and would be coming on Earth Day, which is Thursday, the 22nd of April. Um, Because this is four episodes. They're looking at like beluga whales, orca whales, uh, also humpback whales. And there's like a a fourth episode where it's kind of like king massive whales. And so with that there, they have confirmed that that it's going to be coming on Disney Plus that day. So getting all four episodes on Thursday. There's also a book to go with it that'll be out on April the 6th. But Secret of the Whales, it's great to kind of see that officially confirmed. Um, I love it when they do this stuff with um, Earth Day. I always think it's great. I am much more looking forward to watching this series than I was last year's Earth Day stuff where we had, um, I think it was like we had we had the Jane Goodall documentary and another and Born Next, I think it was. And then just before that, we had Elephant and Dolphin Reef. It does seem a little bit like, yeah, it does feel a little bit now with Disney nature, like they can kind of go, we don't need them with National Geographic anymore. It does kind of feel a little bit like um, they've got a much um, bigger studio. I'm looking forward to this. I love Wales. Um, I know there's in one of the th- episodes, they're going to be going down to uh, the South Coast, sort of down to the South Island of New Zealand. Um, I actually went there about 15 years ago, a, li- a little village called like Kaikoura. And you go off there and I mean, we saw orcas, we were seeing humpback where I was jumping around and also just off the coast of Australia as well. I went off where they did like a lot of orca hunting. There used to be a pack of orcas that used to, they used to train with, with boats to go out and hunt. And it was, there's a museum and stuff. And I went off humpback and they were jumping and splash. So I'm really excited about this. I, I go whale well watching whenever we go anywhere. I'll go out on a boat to watch whales. I do it all the time whenever we're on vacation. I love it. Um, so this is really exciting. I'm looking forward to this one. I know it won't grab as much attention as everything else, but I like this kind of stuff personally. I, I'm definitely in on these. 
I have to agree on this one. I'm, I'm a big whale fan. I, ha- I don't have quite the extensive range of whale watching as you do, but uh, when I used to visit my grandparents over in Massachusetts, we would go off uh, off the Cape and we would find minkies and finbacks and uh, the occasional humpback. Uh, and they would, they, you know, they do their breaching and fit flipper flaps and all that stuff. And it's always so much fun. You, you never really realize how big they are until you see them in person. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. I mean, when you are literally eyeball to eyeball, like a meter or two meters away from looking straight into the eye of a humpback whale and it's looking back at you and you can see it looking at you, you know, that's, that's, that's the feeling. So I think I have got that kind of thing now with watching whale documentaries. It's just like, yep, that just brings it back. And I'm like, cool, really excited about that one. And that's nice to have that one officially. Conf- I mean, we knew about it. We've known about it for a while, but I can see this happening a little bit more. There was also a major announcement that kind of, that has massive implicate massive implicate yeah it's big big for disney plus it, normally yeah. it's me who gets tongue tied i'm yeah look, it, it, you know it, it's like my dog woke me up at six o'clock this morning so there we go um so gordon ramsay uncharted will be returning for its third season on memorial day on the 31st of may this year i'm um, in the u.s and so this is for the u.s only um, so what's going to be happening is episodes are going to be dropping the following day onto Disney Plus. So that means like on that week, we're getting an episode on the Tuesday and then new episodes will be dropping every Sunday onto National Geographic. So that means, oh, sorry, um, on, yeah, on Sundays and then on Mondays we'll be arriving on Disney Plus. So this is going to, they're going to, he's going to be visiting Texas, Portugal, Maine, Croatia, Puerto Rico, Iceland, the Smoky Mountains and Mexico. So this has massive, massive things for what's, you know, they didn't announce it for anything else. This is whether or not this is a test, whether or not, you know, new contracts are there for, they can do it. Um, I have had it confirmed that this is not going to be the case for the UK. So I have had that um, confirmed, um, which is a shame, but this is, this could have big, big, big things. I'm really excited to see what they do with this. It's certainly going to extend what's come to Disney plus every week. Yeah, I, I hope that if this is a an experiment in release schedules, that it is successful and it sees positive numbers. I think uh, in the stable of National Geographic's um, IPs isn't really the right word, but we'll go with that. Uh, Gordon Ramsay or anything he attaches his name to is going to uh, attract attention. So this is a pretty good uh, series to test it on. And also that they, they actually use this very much as the... Is, the post child for the National Geographic side of Disney Plus, you know, when they do the posters with the brands, you know, he's quite often there as the main one for National Geographic. This is a big show. I really enjoy the show. I like, I mean, I've been a big fan of Gordon Ramsay for, for decades. For, for, like, he seems to be on TV since far back as I can remember over here. I watch quite a few of his shows. So I like this series. Um, again, it, I know like over here in the UK, you know, I think it goes to Sky first. That's why it's not on there just yet. But um, yeah, I think this is this is the start of what I said was going to be happening. You know, this is the kind of they know this is what they do with Hulu. They know the numbers are there. They've not started it with Disney Channel, but this is coming. This is just you can tell that this is the trend they're going, and this is the first one. Um, I did actually because I put up a couple of I did put up the articles for July and June, and people are going, "There's nothing on here but that, for Gordon Ramsay." Like, yeah, but we've had an. I was going to, once we start having an official announcement for dates, I like to start my list up because I'm adding to it all the time. It's like, well, you know, we've got a show a week right through June and July now on the month on Mondays, which I think is just great. So there's a show that I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to, but could have big, big impact on what we see on Disney plus. And I think we're just going to see more of this as we go forward. Cause I think the numbers will be so much better on Disney plus. They'll be going, yeah, well, that's what we're doing. And I think we'll see it with more National Geographic shows first. Uh, so it'll start with Gordon Ramsay, but then uh, as they get more specials, as they get more of those series, like we could start seeing it with like those vet shows. Um, yeah. you know, I know they announced several as part of this, like uh, Critter Vets and, and so on. Yeah, um, I mean, just kind of running through, this is, so I'm just going to run through some of the things that they've announced. So we've these are all coming to National Geographic, which ultimately then will be eventually turning up on Disney Plus at some point. Um, the more mature ones might go to Hulu, but then internationally there'll be a star original. So, um, so there wouldn't be a star original, but they will be arriving eventually. So we've got Impact with Gal Gadot, who is obviously Wonder Woman. We have got um, 
Own the Room, which is a new documentary coming to Disney Plus on March the twelfth. Uh, so that one they we did release a trailer for. Um, it's just yeah, just, the, that one's kind of like a Global Student Entrepreneur Awards. So kind of a bit like Science Fair. So we know that one's coming to Disney Plus. We got Doctor Oakley Yukon Vet. That one's returning for a new season. We get in the third season of Genius, which is about Aretha Franklin. That will be coming for a full night event in March to National Geographic. And, and just remember, the Genius series are not connected at all. So you can jump yeah. into this one without having seen season one or two. Though you now, should. The, the very thing good. is with this, is the fourth season about Martin Luther King is actually going to be a Disney Plus original. So this is where this thing gets a little bit tricky because they're, they're shifting this show over to, over to Disney Plus. But this one obviously hasn't because they wouldn't have done um, I would not be at all surprised if these genius shows arrive at some point. I know they're a little bit more mature, but they did kind of make a big deal of them at the Investors Day. So they might be holding back till next year or doing something with it. Um, but I think the first two seasons are going to be dropping internationally. So, yeah, so that um, I'm looking forward to this. This is, you know, a drama series is always great. Uh, Running Wild with Bear Grylls is returning for a new season. This is the one I'm looking forward to as well. Race to the center of the earth. So I'll be racing around the earth, trying to win a one million pound prize. I love those shows. I just, you know, this is kind of like, yeah. It's not because there was Journey to the Center of the Earth with, uh, is it The Rock who starred in those? Yeah, The Rock and Brendan. Yeah, there was the yeah. And Brendan Fraser. Yeah, I remember the ride in Tokyo Disney Sea. That was the other thing as well that they had kind of had something similar to that. But no, this to me, to me, it's just like anything involving racing around a place is just great. I mean, I love all those kind of shows. Um, moving on from there, we also, uh, so we've got Secrets of the Where is it? Kingdom of the Polar Bears will be coming on Earth Day to National Geographic as well. And the, and the Kingdom series is another one that's really worth watching. Um, I know Kingdom of the White, uh, White Wolf uh, yeah. was really good. And then Kingdom of the Blue Whale, I think was the other yeah. one was also really good. So, so I have high hopes for this one. And also, like I said, you know, they're both available on Disney+. Plus. These, these are all going to eventually turn up. Critter Vets, Country Vets will be returning. So the first season's on Disney+. Plus Now, um, we've also got the Breaking Bobby Jones. Sorry, Breaking Bobby Bones. Well, there's the new episodes. Um, I don't know with that one. That one's going to be a bit more tricky because I think that one's got like the BBC involved. So that might have an impact internationally. Then there's going to be a new documentary called Red Summer. Um, which is about the two-day Tuscan massacre. So that one might end up going to Hulu, I imagine, but who knows? Yeah, probably that's that's a very heavy subject. Yeah, it's a pretty heavy subject, but this is what we want. And then you've got America's Funniest Home Videos Animal Edition on coming in June on National Geographic. So that was a perfect Disney Plus um, eventual release. Um, there was also all kinds of different shows that they announced um, which, you know, we've got a load of documentaries being made by the team behind Solo, and one of them going off to Everest. There's documentaries going on on sharks. There's documentaries going on, um, what was it? There was, there was, there was like, they're going under the sea with some of them. There's a whole host of stuff, and it really, they were just, there were so many announcements. It was quite, quite impressive of the amount of content that's coming. You've got one about, like, a cat, the Thai cave rescue, very cool stuff all of which i will say eventually will end up on disney plus you know there's there's so much i always feel like national geographic gets completely overlooked because a massive chunk of disney plus audience isn't interested in it i do think it's very good for adults to have it there but i think as disney plus grows a little bit more mature this content's got to find its own home because i know now like with the star expansion coming, suddenly then maybe ad there's going to be much more adults looking to see what's on there that maybe weren't doing that before. You know, where they were going, you know, you're going to find a lot more. I think there will be a, a, more people watching stuff because adults will be strolling through looking for things to watch where they maybe at the minute are going, uh, yeah, Wonder Vision, yeah, there's nothing else and, and leave out. I think that's going to have a big impact. Yeah, I agreed. And there will be people who will be like, I don't want this in, in my Disney Plus, but I mean, it's not going to yeah. change at this point. I, it's that kind of thing when, you know, like I did a, uh, uh, there was one coming up, well, I, you know, I want shows from my childhood, like Rody Polioli. This is an entirely different audience. 
<laughs> you know, the ones kids watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse aren't watching, you know, a documentary about sharks. You know, it's it's a very different audience, and it's not no, about I, if you, I, yeah. I loved shark documentaries as a kid, so, but so I. <laughs> I just feel it's a little bit like you know, Nat Geo has its own stuff, and like for us, it's definitely. I've always felt like it's been a much bigger appeal to have all this content in there of what I watch. Um, I've been watching uh, um, Europe from above this past week on there. So this is kind of, I like these kind of shows. So I'm definitely much into that one there. Right. So that pretty much wraps up the news portion. So before we jump into this week's reviews, just want to do some shout outs and some um, hellos to our supporters, which are over on Patreon and also YouTube channel members. They get early access to some content. Um, for example, our weekly like retro review. They've got access to a couple there for, for the rest of this month. They also had a bonus one that you guys will all be able to see on Wednesday. Uh, Josh did an interview with the Tough Pigs where they talk about the new Muppets show that's coming to Disney Plus next week. Um, and also last week you had um, a football one. We did some, we're trying a few different things out of like, you know, uh, some different topics and stuff. So that's, that, that was something. Also, you get your name at the end. So let's jump into it. I'm um, a huge thank you to Sarah for being at the executive producer at Platinum Level. A massive thank you for your support. Andrew, Jacob, Red Marsman, Andrew, Chris, Cody, Darren, The Juice, Lester, Lauren, What's on Netflix. Huge thank you for all of your support on Patreon. Meanwhile, over on YouTube, big shout out to Amit, Youssef, Ben, Adam, Chelsea, Tom, Red Raven, Dawn, Bad Dog Gaming, Martin, Jeremy, Joshua, and Sarah for all of your support. Um, last week, I did do something a little bit different rather than my normal q and I actually did it live, which seemed to go down really well. And we had a bit of a live chat going on with the members. So um, I might do that one again this week and I'll give it a go. Um, depends what's going on with Valentine's with my wife. So she, unfortunately, uh, um, to the rest of you, she does come first. <laughs> <laughs> it just happens okay to me she's that. off she's off on valentine's day and um, yeah so um but the plan is to start doing this as a weekly thing i'm going to try and do um a live stream because I, that was quite fun it was quite fun doing that for everyone so now let's jump into the shows before we jump into one division let's did you watch behind the mask i did watch behind the mask so this is the, the marvel documentary yeah what did you think of it i thought it was pretty well done uh it's a little a little back patty but uh but overall uh, it is, it's more in depth than what we're used to for a lot of the Marvel documentaries. Um, yeah, I, I had some issues with how they presented some of uh, their history, kind of pointing, sticking primarily few, to the def- positive. There was definitely um, a few little jabs at DC at a couple of occasions. Um, a couple, I was expecting they did, that. <laughs> they did kind of say that there were some problems and they didn't sh- completely shy away from it. They didn't shy away from the fact of a bit like North star where they kind of chickened out of going with the, the AIDS epidemic situation in the eighties, what uh, we were in and they ended up turning him to half a fairy. You know, that was where, you know, they were quite yeah. critical. They, they really did kind of, they didn't pull any punches on the fact that they, they, that they didn't, that the art, the writers weren't keen on that one, but they were very, yeah, like I say, very much along the lines of, I wasn't expecting that from this episode. I was, I kind of went in this going, is this going to be like a 15, 20 minute fluff piece about, you know, Peter Parker and Takala or something like that. And it was like, and like, and that's kind of how it started. I'm going, okay, you know, what, you know, why are they got masks or why? Are they? And then it kind of went into this full blown thing about, you know, the identities and um, diversity and inclusion. I'm going, I wasn't expecting this kind of angle. This wasn't, it was like, Okay, so they kind of kept that one a bit off. Now, I think, uh, do you not think that this was a Marvel 616 episode and they've just rebranded it, which I think makes a lot of sense, but it felt like this was a Marvel 616 episode. Uh, Aside from the fact that they had different creators than I think we saw in most of the 616 episodes. Yeah, but then they were all done separately as well, weren't they? They were all completely different. They were, and well, they all had that bland backdrop, though. That was interesting. Yeah. As I sit in front of a white wall, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, so there was that. I I could definitely see an argument for it being uh, a repurposed six one six, kind of like they wanted it to get a little extra attention, which makes the whole thing about them not promoting it a little odder. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you look at that six one six series, if they del- released them all individually, they actually would have had a bigger impact. 
uh, because they kind of got sh- lost because they weren't connected. They were some of them were worth it on their own because they're like an hour plus long. I was surprised with this one. I think as well with it being on its own. When with Marvel six one six, it was like six episodes, eight, six or eight jo- episodes dropping at once. It was a bit like, oh, um, you guys, I can't. This is too much. Well, one on its own, you kind of was able to keep that like interest level in. It wasn't what I was expecting. It was a lot better than I was expecting. Like I say, it was a little bit um, pat on your back. But also, I find it very interesting. Of like, I mean, the whole thing of like people going on about, you know, all the inclusion and stuff and diversity. And he look and he's like, you watch this documentary and go, they've been doing this since the 60s. This is something they've been doing for like 60 years. This is not new. And they, you know, they represent what's going on. And I, you know, hearing Stan Lee talking about, I mean, I didn't even recognize him. It was that, oh, you know, that was that far. I'm going, wow, he looks different. You know, he's, I mean, if, you know, brown hair, full, you know, it just like, beard, it, just, yeah. it, it just beard. I mean, it's just like, wow. He, and, it, you know, him talking, it, that could be him. That could have been him now. Yeah. You know, and, it, and actually the sections with Stan Lee, I'm willing to give a lot of credit to. Um, they earned the, the, the pat on the back. Uh, yeah. there because it really was a good way of doing it we're just like all right we're going to include people of color in the background scenes which doesn't sound particularly radical but it at the time it was mm. and then they were willing to cop to the fact that like i wrote this or stanley wrote this as a black character but when they got to the coloring department they're like wait no this gotta be we don't have yeah. black characters what's this and then it colored them white and then even when they corrected it they're like wait, what color do we use for the, yeah. and, and they looked at like, like Frankenstein monsters for a couple episodes or issues. There. Yeah. I'm, and they, they, they didn't really pull any punches on the fact that they were wrong or they would, they were breaking. And also like, which they, you know, like coloring Asians yellow, you know, they were very, they were very open about the fact that this was, it was wrong and it took them way too long to fix it. And they weren't happy about it. And they, you know, and I thought that was very, they were very open. And I thought that was, this is what I like with documentaries when they aren't just fluff pieces, you know, they've, they've been allowed to kind of cover, you know, talk about some of the issues. Now, obviously there's a lot more issues that they didn't go into, but I was very impressed with this one. I was like, this wasn't what I was expecting. And it, it was like, I, I, I know a lot of people aren't going to watch it, but I can see why they didn't promote it in some ways. Cause it just, it, it would have just drawn the wrong attention. Um, but if you love Marvel comic books, this is a really great episode. It's, I said it, it kind of feels a bit like Marvel 616. If you enjoyed that show, you're going to enjoy this one. I would agree with that. Um, I will say my complaints mostly come around the fact that, yeah, they, they went in on uh, the issues of, of black people and Asians and they, they owned that. Yeah. They, they did not admit to some of their biggest problems in those regards, but that's okay. They at least yeah. owned it a little bit. When it came to women and female representation, they glossed over a whole host of of just stuff that you do. They don't they don't want you to remember. No, and it wouldn't have been quite as obvious if they hadn't used Captain Marvel as the lead on that. Um, it's been a while, so I think most people don't know about it, and I won't go into it in detail because mm. it's not really appropriate. Avengers number two hundred from early nineteen eighties, I think it was, absolutely destroyed that character. Like yeah. the, they, the, the writer in charge of that, just, it, it was straight up. It's like one of the worst things that they've done to a female character short mm-hmm. of killing them, made the character almost untouchable until the nineties. And they, they just didn't even talk about it. It's like, yeah, yeah. you're going to promote Captain Marvel as this great feminist icon. Why don't you talk about the time when you totally destroyed her character? It's very, cause they very much kind of, it was a bit like, and Captain Marvel is now great in 2012. Right. It's like, it's yeah, like, what, they, what they, happened between 1977 when she was created and, and 1997 yeah. when she was rehabilitated? I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, they were, you know, very much in focusing on Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, Miles Morales. They did that thing with, was it the, the Totally Hulk? Which uh, I remember the, being. Yeah, the Totally Awesome Hulk. Yes. Which I remember that was a big flop because I didn't. Yeah, well, yeah. they were. <laughs> they, they were a bit. They, was, there, was, there was a major problem that Marvel had around that time. Miles and Miss Marvel have been able to sidestep it and move past it. There was a whole load of other stuff that didn't. And it was, they kind of went a little bit too much at that time. But it was a very, they're like I said, they, were, they, they did pull on it, but they also didn't. They, they kind of, they, 
I think now we're years past that situation where that all went. You know, the strong characters survived and the weak characters didn't. Pretty much. I mean, and, yeah. and you, don't, you don't remember the, the characters no. that don't, and, except when they get brought up every once in a while, like Amadeus Cho and uh, Totally Awesome Hulk. And like, oh, yeah, that was a thing. I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, all, I mean it, well, the thing is, you know, you look at like Lady Four. I mean, we're going to be getting that in uh, Love and Thunder. And it was like, at the time, I remember there being a big uproar about it. But obviously, by the time they did the story, where she ended up having cancer and kind of everything that went on, you know, that whole storyline made it was so great because, but at the time it was, it wasn't received very well, you know, and that was the thing of. There was a lot of backlash yeah. uh, to a perception that Marvel was pushing an agenda yeah. at that point. Um, but you had the, the Jason Aaron run on Thor, which started with, um, with God killer and then led into the lady Thor and then mm. to a couple stories past that is, probably one of the best thor stories in publication right now mm. yes it's kind of weird where we're for now because i'm currently about 50 hours into assassin's creed valhalla and you know there's a whole a section where you go to asgard and fight with thor and loki and odin and fair Th- and i'm just thinking like between my entire norse knowledge is based on god of war marvel and now assassin's creed <laughs> <laughs> I, I distinctly remember the first time I read a proper Norse mythology story. Um, and my, my only experience was Thor from yeah. um, Marvel, Thor and Loki. And I read that first story. I was like, I've been lied to. <laughs> these, these characters, Thor's like a complete idiot. Yeah. And, you know, good yeah. story, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. So, that, that, so that, that's been kind of it. But um, so that one, there was that one. We also had Inside Pixar. We had five new episodes drop there. Did you watch them? I did not. I uh, something had to cut with all the stuff uh, dropping yes. this week, and it, it was Inside Pixar. I do intend to watch them though because I, I liked actually, the first season of them. I did watch them last. I watched. I think I ended up watching. Yeah, I watched all five last night. As I said beforehand, I did watch the pastry one first. <laughs> it was, you know, it was just about the girl that works in the works in the cafe, and she makes cakes, and she likes working there. She rides to. She rides in there on a bike. She has nice, good hours. Because the, the you know it's a lot easier than working in a restaurant, which meant now that she had been able to get a cat, you know, <laughs> just sort of like it, it was just like kind of thing of you know she's you know she puts all of her creation into making these cakes that people can buy at the things and themes them around, and I was just thinking it's like this is really really fluffy, but it kind of like this this Pixar building is a very strange place, you know they you know we had another woman basically that's in charge of the building. And she took us on a tour around the building. You know, this is me changing it. This is us changing the light bulbs. Here's the storage. You know, here's the, the server room. <laughs> and it was a bit like, okay, it, it felt like we all had like a little guided tour around. And then there was other people like, you know, one was a production assistant. And she explained how she got into it and how she worked her way to get into the company. And just, you know, just her, you know, she just goes, I just sit there and take notes. You know, and I just one of the highlights. And I hope, and there's like, and she showed you the walls and the corridors and like the, you know, shut. And it was, a, I was a bit like, this is really kind of mundane stuff, but it's kind of interesting. You know, it's like all the jobs of people that work in maybe that you, you know, we all, everyone gets attached to the director, the executive producer, the writer. The, and it's like, these are all really like all the people at the end that are just rolling through, you know, they all have like normal jobs. You know, they go to work, they do the thing, they go home, they live their lives, but we don't ever even think about it. And, yeah, there they was, you know, there was another one, that, you know, like a, a composer, and he goes around singing to everyone with a load of them on, ha- on happy birthdays. They all go around, and it's like this is a crazy place to work. I mean, they've, they're very creative in what they do, but I kind of like these little. I feel like in these last few documentaries, we're really seeing an insight into what goes on in these places, and they are quite bonkers. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to it. it. It's it's a different perspective. It might not be what you want from an inside Pixar. But to be honest, a lot of the creative process is covered in um, a lot of special material that they've already created. Like if you have, uh, if you go back to the physical media, the DVD mm-hmm. and the Blu-rays, um, it's pretty comprehensive how they, they build all this. And of course, there's uh, the Frozen backstory. Obviously, it was Disney, not Pixar, but it's you know similar idea. So I kind of appreciate that they're like, eh, you know what, we're just going to we're going to have the lady from the cupcake shop over here for a bit. 
I think what got me with this one, and it was the same really, I think, with that Into the Unknown one, was they, they really were allowed to go into much more detail. You know, because usually when there was extras, they were like a 15, 20 second quip, and then they'd move on. Whereas this one, they kind of, you know, to follow 10 minutes of the production crew working on Soul, you know, of just as, you know, and, you know, it was very detailed and I, I kind of like it. You definitely have to be involved in wanting to learn about filmmaking and be interested in it. It's not for everyone. It is a bit, you know, you could say it's a bit filler, you know, it's not Disney love making behind the scenes documentary stuff because there's a, there's a group of people that are always interested in it. And also it's dirt cheap for them to make. <laughs> like we've got the we've got the, the cameras here we can you're here we're you're under contract we got you yeah and and actually when you especially for animation when you're showing some behind the scenes stuff it is a chance for these people uh who you normally would know nothing about to you know go hi mom and and show that show off their stuff on camera because um for most of us the animators the producers they're just names in the credits yeah, it, I, I, it was a good look. It was, um, I kind of, I think going into it, I knew what I was expecting. Was when the first five dropped, I didn't know what we were getting. Um, but yeah, so nice, nice, good filler. Um, also this week we had Cinderella, the 1997 version dropped everywhere except for the UK. We'll be getting it into it in a few weeks on March the 5th. Um, I haven't, didn't watch it yesterday. I was a bit like, um, no, wait. There's a lot of, a lot of excitement in the group. Can always can always get that feeling of when when something is popular and when someone when people are excited about something, you know, you you gotta get that feeling. And Cinderella seems to be one of those big big hits. I think a lot of people are going to be watching um, over the weekend. So um, I've never seen it before. I don't even know if it aired here in the UK when it came out originally. But then when it came out, I'd have been like seventeen. I wouldn't have watched it. <laughs> <I'm honest. Fair. laughs> I I have not seen it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing it this weekend. Uh, at, there's definitely been some buzz about it, and it it does sound like even though it's an older production, it holds up. So then let's talk now. One division. So we're going to be going into full blown spoiler mode, though. This one didn't really feel like it had as many, but yes. Yeah, so if you haven't seen the episode, um, either come back when you do it, or we'll see you next week. So let's jump into One Division episode six. What did you think of it? I enjoyed this a lot, actually. So if you remember last week, I, I was going into that episode like, uh, I don't, don't want to do, do the sitcom thing again. They've really kind of just hand-waved it away. Obviously, you can see the influence from 90 sitcoms, particularly, I think, Malcolm in the Middle. Malcolm, the whole intro scene was just like... It's straight up Malcolm in the Middle. I, it was. <laughs> it would have been great if they'd been able to get Brian Cranston there just... just because uh yeah. you know no no explanation he's just there um i mean it worked for pietro so mm-hmm. why not uh but yeah i mean this episode it had that mix of uh things are weird things are broken uh and we're starting to finally just be open about it visions off doing his thing pietro's having a heart to heart with wanda and he's just like talk to me i know things are screwy why don't you tell me about it it's like, <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was i really enjoyed this it kind of felt like because it, it was like the thing of like there being spoilers to talk like like mm, it's like it just there wasn't that there wasn't that moment like we had last right. week where it was like you can't mention this because you'll wreck the whole episode. This one didn't have that. There was maybe something at the end, but it wasn't really in that same zone. And um, the whole thing with the sitcom, it kind of fell to pieces quite within like I mean I like, like the fact that the kids talking to you. You know that was like it was like you know that was Malcolm in the middle. That was that whole thing. I think next week we're moving into Modern Family with with Wanda talking directly at us um, from a picture I saw, but uh, from the trailer. And yeah, I did like that whole thing. You know, obviously the kids have got superpowers now. You know, they kind yeah. of brought that in quite quick. But I, I was loved, expecting that. Yeah, but I really loved Quicksilver being the crazy uncle. Because I like, you know, in the intro, and then he run in, and then he's like, uh, you know, and I'm like, okay, they are fully go. And then he was, he was in there, you know, he was a major character. He wasn't just an, in, you know, they they had him in there as a major thing. And I really, but what got me, they really pushed on the fact in that opening credits that he'd been recast, and he because they show proper clips of was it was it Aaron was it um 
uh, yeah, Aaron Taylor or something or other. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah they, mean, they, showed... they they showed it. They didn't just um, you know gloss over it. They really showed the fact that he died and he was a different person. And he got and you know Darcy going. They recast him, and he was. He was in there, and the fact that they messed about with the with the accents, you know, they were really going for it. Yeah, it's one of those things where the where people like to nitpick shows, and they're like, yeah. well, oh, the character's accent dropped after so many, or or their hairstyle changed, or you know, and and this show is just kind of like whatever. You, you can't tell if we meant to do it or not. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, uh, you know they planned. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, but I it, really love I love Quicksilver, and I'm like going, and there was like, obviously that thing with Vision leaving. And then him falling to pieces. Um, so it's either him being pulled back in or him just like he can't exist outside the hex. And now I'm wondering if that's gonna set up the more protect trying to protect the kids and vision. If they need to stay in the hex to survive. And that kind of maybe where they start fighting with but we also don't I mean it definitely feels like um Haywood is after vision rather than after Wanda. You know, there's something with one, something with vision that they've done to him or in, inside him that they want back. Well, I'm sh- even if they haven't done anything to vision, though, it's strongly implied they have. Uh, well, calling him the episode. asset is the kind asset, of, right? That was, the- <laughs> which would suggest that they've done something to it. But even if they haven't, you know, he's got all that Ultron data in yeah. him. He's got um, all of his own data. He's got the connection to the Life Stone. There are many reasons they would and want him. Just back. vibranium. <laughs> Yeah, well, that too. That it's not exactly a, a cheap substance, mm. um, and it, it is a little ambiguous. Was he getting dragged back in? Was he getting disintegrated? Uh, it looked like a combination of both, yeah. actually. Um, and then, of course, you know, it ends with the big expansion, and uh, kind of waiting to see what's going to happen to the guys who got sucked in. I know we saw some of them as circus characters, but like, what's Darcy going to be, and and all that? Well, there's a lot of like talk now that she's going to be a waitress. <laughs> Of, um, um, her from Two Broke Girls or whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, Please don't. No, don't. <laughs> well, like, we kind of like, if they put her just in a, she's a less set, but if she's at least in the outfit similar, that will be quite True. funny. Um, Although, I will admit that they, they do not shy away from the meta commentary. I don't yeah. know how many people caught it, but um, that one line, uh, uh, kick ass, where yeah. uh, it's like, <laughs> Really, that that is incredibly meta because they're yeah. referencing that both of the Quicksilver actors were in that movie. And it's yeah. like, uh, okay, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's um, I it, it, there was a I, this episode kind of ended. I, I I will be watching it again this weekend. Um, it it just there was something about it. It it just like I said, it felt like MCU. We were definitely, you know, it was jumping and flacking around. The thing as well of like Vision, like going into his normal costume. Like we've not seen him obviously since that, since Infinity War, like that. Um, so, and him like, just, he, and just watching everyone just stare and then crying, because they're just, you know, oh, the uh, down the face, you know, and it's like, it's like they're, they're, you know, they're, they're trapped. They're literally so like, trapped in their bodies. So like the, the woman crying and, you know, all the frozen people at yeah. the borders and stuff like that, that's obviously very creepy. Yeah. Um, but the ones that work best for me are the people who have a slight self-awareness of what's going on. Yeah. Um, primarily we saw it with, um, with Agnes, e- even before um, vision temporarily released her, we're, we're getting that kind of like, Oh, uh, she's got some awareness yeah. of what's going on. Uh, we had that last episode of course. And, mm-hmm. and then now Quicksilver just completely tearing down the wall and being like, uh, so, so what are you what are you doing here? Uh, well, this is the thing. The thing is with Quicksilver is, is you know there's so many theories flying around all over the place. So many things of what he is, who he is, what he is, what is it? And I am saying again, please, I'm just gonna, please bring him into the. Just please let him out, get out of that hex so we can keep Quicksilver and move on and do because it's like and let him be the real one because I actually want him. It, it's that kind of thing of like I mean then the, the, the flip of him then being dead with bullets in him. And it was like, okay, and you know, they were really playing with it. And he's he is aware and he is and then she shoots him because you know, he says, you know, and it was you know, but then that's like brother, you know, you can see that with like brothers and sisters where they fight, you know. So I mean you can see that scene in a number of different ways. Because yeah. he, he was also definitely really uh making her mad at that point yeah. too, because he was being very flippant about it. Yeah. And it does raise the question, is he actually on her side? Yeah. Like 
I like I, I wouldn't view him necessarily as maybe working for Hayward or yeah. something like that, but there is maybe uh could this be her dark subconscious mm-hmm. kind of trying to sabotage herself kind of deal? All sorts of ways that they could go with it. And uh you can provide evidence for most of it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh so it'll be a lot of fun to see where they go with that. It'll be fun fun to see if he does just join the MCU. Yeah. This is how they backdoor in the X-Men or or just him. Um, the other lingering question, the one that I, I'm very interested to see is what's going to happen with the kids. Because uh, yeah, the, yeah. the Marvel comics, you can go both ways. There is a story in, oh, in which... Do you mean Billy and Tommy or the kids as a whole? Because there's two uh, issues. In the, the good distinction. In this case, I'm assuming the kids are probably going to go away at the end of the episode. Well, the um, thing is with the kids is, and this is, again, this is where the theory is coming in. All of, is in this... Um, I think it was in the Morpheus trailer. See, this is where how far we're going on. In the Morpheus trailer, there was posters or something. I don't actually, I don't even know if it was Morpheus. So in one of the trailers was something coming up. They showed posters of missing children. And there's a and one and Vision's asked, where did the children come from? And there's a thing of has she literally like nicked a load of kids from around the world? Well, so this is where I was going with the. So that's where, yeah. But this is where I was going with the original thing for Tommy and Billy. uh, There are two paths that they can take with this, both of which are established within the Marvel comics uh, Mm -hmm. in normal continuity. One is, uh, once the hex goes away, they're gone. Uh, They they are completely figments of uh, of Wanda's powers. And once Mm -hmm. you know the the field is gone, they're gone, which was the original story. And then they they came back much later as uh, the kids with the superpowers that we saw them and wearing the costumes that the kids were wearing yeah. um, as Wiccan and Speed, uh, but that came much later and uh, and when they reincarnated a, or something, it's a weird story. Yeah, to be honest, uh, the Young Avengers series, which is where they debuted as actual characters, uh, is really good. Um, they did have to work pretty hard to explain how those kids came. Well, this the, the trouble is, is a little bit along the lines of um, they've got to simplify the storyline a lot more for the MCU. Oh, yes. Absolutely. They have to streamline it a little bit. And I'm not entirely sure. I mean, if they if they basically evaporate them, it's going to be pretty dark and it's going to set her up for being a villain because she's lost her kids. So that could be a way of setting them up or they could that be they could end up being saved and moved into the mcu as new characters as grown-up versions um yeah well i mean they grow pretty fast um again going back to behind the mask the treatment of this original storyline yeah. does not age well uh scarlet witch it's not a good time to be scarlet witch when she loses those two kids in the marvel comics uh, yeah mm. It it could very well be something that leads into a plot with Doctor Strange, honestly. Yeah, it's very much it's it is a strange thing of going on. Um, like we say, it is part of like a trilogy, a multiverse trilogy with uh, Doctor Strange and Spider Man three. So that does open the door for Quicksilver and that lot to come in from other universes, and all cu- we just don't know. We really just don't know how where this is going. Um, all I know is the excitement level. We're at a, it's such a, so weird compared to the Mandalorian dropping, isn't it? You know, there's all these like f- thoughts, and obviously people that have like read House of M have got one way of thinking, and you know, there's there's other people coming in. I've got no clue, just all over the place. But we're left with this kind of every episode. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I definitely get to the end of the episode. I'm like, no, no, you can't stop there. You, yeah, I, I need to know more about what's going on. Even even back in the beginning. So maybe not the first two ish, three ish episodes, but From since episode then, three onwards, yeah, yeah, it was definitely like, wait, no, 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 no don't leave us, don't leave us here. The, the, you you got to explain what's going on with Pietro, and in this case, now you got to be like. Uh, what are these sword people going to turn into? And also importantly, that dangling thread of uh, who, who are um, Agent Wu and, and Photon off to meet and things like that. Um, yeah, well, I think that's Rhodey. Well, could be. There's actually, yeah. there's a couple of options that it could be. Yes. For, but Rhodey is probably one of the most likely ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's so... I mean, we're getting into like, I mean... You know, and we know there's some characters appearing in the show 
um, you know, because they've, they've always been known for ages how this is going to It's just, they've done such a good job of creating, and I don't know how they can maintain that effect for every series. I can't imagine how Falcon could do that. How they don't, they, to be able to do this but they don't the have way. to. No. They don't have to, because we go back to the Mandalorian, which is probably a better template for what Falcon yeah. and the Winter Soldier would be. While we did have that, like, ooh, look, what's going to happen next? Or, or mm. you know, I want the next episode now. It was for different reasons, you know. Mm. It, that was more like, oh, we, we got this crate dragon, and it was, like, more epic than anything in Game of Thrones. I want to see what the next big fight is. Yeah. And I think that's more Falcon and Winter Soldier, whereas WandaVision is definitely like, no, no, no. I, mysteries. Tell me the mysteries. Yeah. It's it's a very it's a I mean literally it's like like I'm I mean I start I usually I'm at like five past eight ten past eight you know once I've sorted out a few articles that I was that I've already, I don't be honest they're already pre prepared I'm just checking them before <laughs> to save me time <laughs> so, it's just like so I can literally get I, I it was just like I want to get in I don't want it spoil I don't want to go off social media I am watching this so I can get the full experience and um, yeah it is just. It is a it's just a crazy show, and I think it's just going to continue to build. It'll be interesting when they all come in together. With you know, will people binge watch it, rewatch it, whether or not it'll have the same impact. But it, it certainly got some got so many people talking, much more so. I think what, uh, Mandalorian was able to do it for for like you know debuts of like Ahsoka and they, but most episodes kind of tended to. They, you know, it was a single story and it was a start, middle, and end. Whereas this is just one long story, and there isn't, it doesn't, you know, you aren't, doesn't, they've just done an incredible, just kick off the MCU on Disney Plus. I always question whether or not it was the right series to start it with, but as it's gone on, like they are making some incredible, this is the perfect television for right now. It wasn't going to be the one to kick off the the MCU, but, but still, yeah, I agree. Well, by Um, by now we would have had, if we, if we had, if there'd been no COVID, WandaVision would be arriving now anyway, you know, that would have mm -hmm. been always December, January anyway, we would have already had Black Widow. We'd have had um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We would have had Eternals. Um, Shang Chi, I think, was Shang. Shang Chi would have been. I think yeah, Shang Chi was now. always, but be coming out. I think February, so we'd be having that now, and then Doctor. Yeah, so every so we would have been. We're essentially we are a year behind where we were, but but One Division's arrived when it was supposed to, and everything. And it, it like I say, it's just a very strange, strange little show. It is a strange little <laughs> show, but it, it's it's working, and that's yes. that's what it. And like if if we went back to the beginning, and I think I even said this back in like the first or second review, it's like I don't know if I'll watch this again once it's done. But now I'm like, oh yeah, you get past those first handful of episodes, which aren't bad to begin with. Um, but you you get into the beat of it, and you, you know once once you actually get like the sword reveal, and you have the one episode where from Monica's point of view, and you're like, now we're now we're cooking. I think if I was to go back, I think I probably would only go back to episode three and then go forward from there. I. <laughs> I am absolutely skipping episode one. Um, I cannot watch that episode. <laughs> that that dinner scene almost killed me. I, I, that was so and tough also, to yeah. sit through. And also, that yogurt tr- advert, that was weird. That was weird. I mean, the adverts so far have been weird, but they've been like, oh, this is can't be 60s, this can't be yeah. 70s. Um, and then totally there's like, bro, the, dude. <laughs> yeah, and then there's like the... The one little like the blinking red light on the toaster like oh that's kind of creepy and oh stark oh she's thinking about stark because it was his bombs that blew things up and oh she's thinking about uh, lagos because that was nigeria and that's where um she screwed up that was the start of civil war and and then this one she's like what is this This kid's just starving to death because he can't open the yogurt pat what is going on yeah it was weird i mean i did like the shark i mean the shark was so 90s oh that was yeah (laughs) Yeah, and that's what I was expecting. I was like, okay, he's going to give him the product, and the product will tie in somehow to to Wanda's life. And of course, it, it's magic in this case. I'm like, okay, and then, and the kid will will, will be fine. And then oh, he's not <laughs> fine. It's like it was just just really weird. Because the thing is, someone put up, we we had a post come through of just a picture of this kid. Of course, 
it didn't really say anything because this is you know because we're trying to avoid the spoiler ones but i did put it through because it was like well no because there's not actually anything in here that you wouldn't you it's not a spoiler because it wasn't making any sense and people there's a few people going what's this where is this from what show is it it's like yeah because it's completely just random it's claymation and it's, yeah <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah i it probably is signifying a that this series is is ta- taking a much darker turn uh, yeah. I mean, it's not exactly been sunny and bright and happy minus the first episode or so. Uh, but especially with the actions at the end of this episode and what we're probably leading into, it's about to get dark. I think as well, it's like one to know that she's much more. Um, she's sometimes she comes across like such a different character to what we've seen her in because she's so, you know, playful and like sunny and kind of like. You know, and very nice, very kind of, you know, and it kind of feels like an entire. I'm watching, I'm watching an entirely different character than we saw in the Avengers movies because, you know, she's there and she's with her kids and all the rest of it, and then suddenly then she flips, you know, like when she comes out the bubble and becomes, you know, the Scarlet which we're used to. So is she, I mean, she's like it does feel like she's playing a different character completely. Well, when things are going the way that she wants them to do, she has yeah. the happy family, the two kids. Yeah. She had the dog temporarily. Uh, oops. And uh, and things are are playing out like a fun sitcom. She mm-hmm. and she's she's fine with that. It's when something disrupts it, whether it's Vision becoming aware of it, or her neighbor being like, "Oh, do I need to do that again? Should I come in again, do the line?" Or uh, you know, Sword trying to bomb her with a drone. Uh, that we get the Wanda that we know with a slightly darker bent. Uh, maybe not all that much slightlier, actually. No, it definitely, um, I do think it's going to be interesting how this works together. I am wondering if whether or not Vision is going to be brought back because they do put the Infinity Stone back in him and he can live. Uh, because, because this kind of feels a bit like this, they kind of killed him. If they're going to bring him back, they might as well bring him back now. They can't, it's like, I know, I know. You, you could say, oh, it's, this is a send off, but it's like, kind of feels a lot of, a lot of ways of, of desperately trying to make him. You know, be brought back as a major Avenger and then just to kill him off again seems a... well the problem with Vision, they, don't like course, killing, they don't like killing off you know money makers you know and it's like easy they don't like killing off money makers but the problem with Vision is he is exceptionally powerful uh, and it, it's hard to write stories where things are a threat to Vision they have the same problem with Captain Marvel uh, and mm-hmm. a couple other characters but um, you know if they can kind of trim it a little bit so that they don't have so many overpowered characters I could see an argument for that Honestly, you can put up an argument either way. You can put the, you know, it ends with him being definitively dead, uh, which puts a, an end cap in it, makes, gives the series a very dark edge to it and maybe catapults Wanda into being a villain. I think you or, just your kids would do that now. Well, losing yeah. your kids plus losing Vision again for the third yeah. time would, I, she'd probably just snap, honestly. But you can also go the happy ending where, oh, no. Uh, the bubble comes down or the hex comes down. She's still got her kids. I have visions back alive. Um, maybe she gets a slap on the wrist for, you know, you know, screwing with reality, but maybe yeah. she gets the happy ending or, or maybe you do some sort of mix where the reality is really dark, but then she just gets stuck in her own head where this mm. uh, sitcom exists forever. Who knows? There, there's a lot very, of different ways they can end this. Yeah. Very strange. We don't know where it's going. It's, um, I just feel like with vision, it's a little bit like, they wouldn't, they, they don't kill a character off. They don't need to, ca- they kind of, it's that weird thing like you've gone to all this effort of bringing them back from the dead. It kind of makes sense to kind of, you've, you've dealt with a situation of bringing them back now. You might as well bring him back and fit him into the end. I think that's the kind of the same thing with Quicksilver of like, right, you know, but no, the no one stays of- dead except for, you know, even, even, you know, it's, I don't know. It's just in the comic books, Vision's still around. You know, this like you know, and this happened. They brought him back in the comic books. Well, they've they've brought him back multiple times in the comic book. He's died several times. Um, but you can also put the argument forward that people are expecting him to come back. So that is the twist ending. That hey, we did an entire series about Vision, and well, he, he's gone. Sorry, yeah. that that's yeah. it. But yeah, very I, very strange. There's a lot of ways they can do it, and that's that's kind of what that's what makes it. It's going to get even stranger. It's gonna, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, This is I. I I don't even know where they're going with this. This whole thing, which is is exciting. 
to me, it's more the multiverse of madness is where the concept of going, this can't go too well because it's going to get madness and multiverses. And I always think like with the, the multiverses are kind of the, the step way of getting, fixing stuff when they, you know, you want to bring vision and quick um, back and have multiverses. You know, you I mean, technically to... that's how they want end game. I mean, yeah. there's like, let's step into the multiverse. We'll go grab the stones from this alternate reality and, and we'll fix it that way. Uh, so yeah. it's not exactly like this is new. Uh, they do have to be very careful with it though. Cause mm -hmm. the, it can screw up continuity so badly. Uh, that said, a lot more planning goes into the MCU stories than goes into Marvel comics because you got to get the comics out every single month where you, you can you can I'm take your time. I'm just trying because because at the end of Endgame, didn't they? They they split. Did they took all the stones apart? Didn't they? So they returned them back to where they got them. That was you know Cap going on yeah, to so, the transporter. So, so where did the Mind Stone go? It got destroyed. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's what we find out here. Yeah, because it kind of, in some ways, putting it back to where it was, was in his head. So <laughs> that's kind of... Well, I think that... Well, they got the Mind Stone from before Vision was even created. Yeah. They got it from the staff. They, you know, that was the whole fight where Captain America fights himself yeah. and Loki escapes, which will set up the Loki series. Yeah. Um, so presumably they got it from the staff somehow, yeah. and they just put it back into the staff. So it wouldn't have affected Vision at mm -hmm. all in that timeline. I don't know. It's, it's all very crazy. <laughs> I mean, that timeline's all sorts of screwed because if, if Loki's not in that timeline anymore, then, um, then you know... Uh, Ragnarok didn't happen. Um, Ragnarok, Dark Ages didn't happen because yeah. uh, he's a pretty integral uh, character in that. Coulson's yeah. been jumping around all over the place and then he's got like loads of different places and you know, Fitz has been doing jumping through the quantum realm. You know, there's loads this, of stuff. This is, this is what I meant. When the multiverse <laughs> really can screw things up if you're not careful. Yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, let us know what you think of WandaVision. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We've got um, at least three more episodes. We've got um, right through to March the 5th, I think that one is. But thank you very much for all of your support if you're a Patreon and a YouTube channel member. And just thank you very much for watching, listening. Go check it out, us out over on the website. And we shall see you guys in another episode. Laters.